Hi, this is Eric Franklin and I'm here with Chelsea and we are going to discover how to perform a backbend in a healthful way. And of course, backbends, we have these very commonly in yoga, but also in dance and Pilates and many other forms. So to understand how to do this from the viewpoint of the pelvis, we first need to just do a brief anatomy review. So the pelvis is made of four bones, two anominates, or I prefer to call them pelvic halves, a sacrum and a tailbone. And what's unique about the human pelvis is that there is movement within these joints. You have movement here in the sacroiliac and also here in front in the pubic symphysis. So why does the human pelvis have this movement? Well, one of the reasons is walking. Human walking really only works if you have some give in the pelvis. The second, of course, is birthing. So giving birth requires a bit of widening through here. And similarly, you're gonna have some of this movement when you go to the toilet. Finally, you also have movement in the pelvis for force absorption. So to deal with the forces coming from the spine, coming from the legs up into the pelvis. Now, very simply stated, the sacrum has two fundamental positions it can take within the pelvis. One is called nutation, the nutated position, which is the more stable position, the one the joint should be in when there's more weight or force coming into the joint. The other position is called counter-nutation, and that is what's taking place, for example, when you're lying on the floor or you're sleeping at night. So it's the non-weight bearing position, the less stable position. So when we are standing here, the sacrum is slightly nutated. However, when we perform a back bend, yeah, the sacrum is going to increase its nutation so that it can carry the increased leverage, deal with the increased force caused by our backward movement. So one more time, when we do this backward movement, what's happening in the sacrum is that the sacrum is going like this, nutating forward in that direction. Now, to visualize the sacrum takes quite a bit of practice. So we can try something else to make this a little bit easier for us. Watch the pelvic halves. When the sacrum nutates, the pelvic halves actually go relatively back like that. So let me show that one more time. So when the sacrum nutates, the pelvic halves are actually rotating back. Let's show that one more time. Pelvic halves rotating back as the sacrum nutates. And that is what you wanna imagine when you do this movement. First, let's do a hand model to understand this movement. One hand is going to be the sacrum at a slant like this. The other hand is gonna be the pelvic half. So when you bend backward, the sacrum nutates. The pelvic half is relatively gonna rotate back. When you come up again, the movement reverses. Let's try that one more time. Sacrum nutates, pelvic half is going back. The next thing you can do is actually hold the pelvic bones. A good place to touch is here at the front where you have a bone sticking out called the anterior superior iliac spine. So when you do your back bend, the sacrum is gonna go like that forward, and you're gonna think of these bones rotating back. So you're gonna rotate back the pelvic halves, imagine the sacrum going in the opposite direction and notice what that feels like. Let's try that one more time. Pelvic bones rotating back, sacrum nutating. Now what would happen if you move the pelvic bones with the sacrum, so in the same direction into nutation. Let's try that. So I'm holding here again and I'm rotating the bones far with the sacrum. You probably will notice a bit of scrunching in your lower back. It's gonna put a lot of pressure in your lower back because that is not the ideal position for your pelvis to be in to help support the load. So let's do this again correctly. The sacrum will nutate going forward, but the pelvic bones will actually 
rotate back. So just imagine that. You can imagine the pelvic bones to be wheels and they're rotating back as you're going forward like this and that'll allow you to have much more of a back bend. One more time, pelvic bones, rotating back, 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 yeah? So we can feel the difference a lot easier. What you don't wanna do is take the bones in the same direction of the sacrum, which would be forward. That's a bad idea. Hmm? Feels uncomfortable, very tight in your back. So let's finish up, however, with a metaphor. So we're gonna use the metaphor of a spring. And the spine isn't a spring, but it's a good idea, good image to use to experience lengthening of your spine as you do a back bend. So obviously as you do a back bend, you're definitely gonna feel the frontier of the body getting more length and stretch. The back, however, of the spine, for example, the spinous processes or the joints, the facet joints, are actually gonna be sliding downward a little bit. But as a fundamental image, this is really helpful. So let's do this. I'm gonna place this here on the front of Chelsea's spine. And as she go back, she's gonna imagine the spine lengthening like that, like a spring. Let's do that again. And lengthening the spine like a spring. There we go. And a little more length. There we go. Excellent, thank you. So we can use anatomical imagery. We can use metaphors to increase the health value of our back bend, but also to make absolutely sure we're doing something that's benefiting the body. So if you enjoyed watching this, then please visit our website, frankamethod.com, where you can sign up for our free newsletter and get many more great ideas on how to move with more efficiency and in a healthy way for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching and see you next time. And now, Chelsea, show me how to do this.